Hello, this is Jared Nimi here with a mini lecture on the concept of exchangeability and its applications to hierarchical models. All right, so first off, the definition of exchangeability. If you have a set of random variables, y1 up to yn, then it's said to be exchangeable if the joint probability of that random, of that set, is invariant to permutation of the indices. That is, for any permutation pi, that the probability here is equal to the probability there of the permutation. All right, so I wanted to just give an example here of an exchangeable set, but that is not independent and identically distributed. So imagine an urn, where the urn only has two balls in it, one red ball and one blue ball, and that the probability of drawing either ball is one half. Now consider drawing without replacement from the urn. So we can only take a maximum of two draws, and we're going to let y1 and y2 be the first draw and the second draw. y1 is going to be, both of them are going to be 1 if the ball happens to be red, and otherwise they're going to be 0. That is, if the ball is blue, then y is 0. All right, so the probability of drawing a red ball and then a blue ball is 1 half, which is exactly the same as the probability of drawing a blue ball and then a red ball. So this set of random variables is exchangeable because the probability here doesn't depend on the order in which the balls are drawn. In contrast, okay, so they are exchangeable, but in contrast, if now let's say we drew a red ball and we ask what's the probability that the second draw is also red, well since the red ball is already gone, that probability is zero, and that's not equal to the probability, the marginal probability of drawing a red ball which is one half. And so the, the idea here is that because this statement is not true, then y1 and y2 are not independent. All right, so the idea here was to give an example of an exchangeable set of random variables, but that's not independently and identically distributed. Thus, the concept of exchangeability is weaker than the concept of IID. All right, the next definition is that of an infinitely exchangeable sequence. So we now have a sequence of random variables y1 uh, on up to infinity, and it's infinitely exchangeable if, for any n, the y1 up to yn are themselves exchangeable. We have a theorem going along with this one that says that all independent and identically distributed random variables or random sequences are exchangeable. All right, so let yj be this sequence of iid random variables. Then the joint distribution for the subset up to n, because they're independent and identically distributed, this is just the product of all the marginal distributions or the marginal uh, densities of the random variables. And now, because they're identically distributed, we can put the y's in any order we want. So we can do any permutation of the y's and still have the exact same probability. But now, because they're identically distributed again, we can say that this product here is again the joint distribution, but now of the permuted random variables. All right, so there's a quick proof that shows that any independent, any IID sequence of random variables are exchangeable. All right, so again, if they are IID, then they are exchangeable, but if they're exchangeable, they're not necessarily IID. All right, uh, an important theorem for the application to hierarchical models here is DeFinetti's theorem. So in DeFinetti's theorem, we have a sequence of random variables that's infinitely exchangeable if and only if. All right, again, we're talking about the joint distribution of all the random variables up to n. And we can write it, according to this theorem, as the product of the conditional probabilities. So conditional on some random variable theta, the y1 of the yn, are in fact conditionally independent. And then we have to integrate out this uh, parameter theta over its measure. Now if you're not familiar with, uh, with this notation right here, this pd theta, you can simply just think about it as replacing that pd theta with the prior for theta times d theta. The idea here is that this theorem is much more general, that it works for any measure, but if you're used to thinking about integrals over the real line, over using Lebesgue measure, 
then just think of it that way. All right, so what does this theorem actually say? This theorem says a few important pieces of information. One, that there must exist a parameter theta, and conditional on this parameter theta, you have a likelihood, the marginal likelihood for each of your random variables, and that importantly, those random variables are independent, conditional on that parameter theta. And that there's some distribution on that parameter theta. All right, so the idea here is that if you assume that your data are exchangeable, that is, there's no information in the, in the indices for the random variables such that you can permute them and have the same joint probability, so if you can make that assumption, then you know that there must be on that parameter and there's some prior distribution for that parameter. All right, so how does this apply to hierarchical models? Well, the first step is to say that assume that our data or the possible data that we could have observed are infinitely exchangeable. Then, by DeFinetti's theorem, for the set that you actually observed, there exists a parameter theta, a distribution for the data conditional on that parameter, such that the data are conditionally independent, and there's some prior on the parameter theta. Now, DeFinetti's theorem isn't prescriptive in terms of is or what prior should be put on that parameter, so we have to make some assumptions now. We're going to assume at this point that our parameter theta is in fact a vector parameter theta, where there's one theta for every data that you could have observed, and we're going to further assume that these are now infinitely exchangeable. Then we reapply DeFinetti's theorem uh, on the set that we actually need. And now we know that there must exist another parameter, phi, a distribution for our parameters theta conditional on phi, such that the parameters are conditionally independent. And this should be phi, not psi, on phi. Now again, DeFinetti's theorem is imprescriptible about what that prior should be or what that parameter should be. So now we're going to assume that phi is just uh, typically it's a univariate or bivariate or something of fairly low dimension. But we're going to make that assumption, and we're going to assume some prior over phi um, in order to do, in order to apply the method, our methods. All right. So uh, one complaint about uh, infinite exchangeability of the data themselves is what if there is some information, say explanatory variables, that can actually distinguish these uh, different uh, observations. So that is, the indices now are informative about which observations are which, and that we cannot assume infinitely exchangeable. Well, sim we simply incorporate that covariate information into our concept of exchangeability. So now we have observations yj and xj for each unit j, and we have a possibly infinite sequence of them. And we're going to assume that they're infinitely exchangeable conditional on xj. Then, by DeFinetti's theorem, for the y1 up to yn, <coughs> we have the following. We have that there's a parameter theta, that the distribution for the data conditional on that parameter and on our explanatory variables, now the data are conditionally independent and that there's some prior on theta conditional on x. All right, so we're going to make the same assumption before, where we assume that there's now one for every possible data point, and we're going to assume that they're infinitely exchangeable conditional on x, and we reapply the Fanetti's theorem to say that now there's some parameter phi, some distribution for the theta that's conditional on phi and x, so that they're conditionally independent, and again, this will be a phi, <coughs> and there's a distribution on phi given the parameters x. And again, we're going to make now another assumption about what that phi is, something that's low dimensional typically, and that it, we have a prior for it conditional on x. All right, so the bottom line here is that we typically are writing hierarchical models in this notation. That is, we explicitly mentioning, mention the conditional independence that we're assuming whether it's for hierarchical models or hierarchical linear models that we'll discuss later. But the bottom line here is that although we typically write using this conditional independence notation, the assumptions that actually underlie the model are assumptions about exchangeability of the observations and the parameters, and some assumptions about the functional forms that the priors actually take on.
Thanks.